Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. I'm so glad to see so many of you with us from all over the world. My name is Esther, and I'm so glad to be your host today. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get to today's very, very exciting session where we'll be talking about strategies to get past overwhelm and enjoy your photographs. And we have a very special guest we have with us, Maureen Taylor. Uh, before I get to today's session, I just want to let you know about a few things that we have going on at My Heritage. So a few fantastic deals that we have um, that are both really amazing holiday gifts. So if you're in the market, if you still haven't done that shopping, if you'd like to send something to cheer up your family, uh, spending a little bit of time away from them this holiday season, these are some fantastic, fantastic gifts. So the first thing that we have is a early holiday DNA sale. So that is on the MyHeritage DNA kit, as you can see uh, up on the screen next to me. So please take a look at that. We have an early holiday DNA sale going on. Uh, if you've already taken a DNA test, then definitely have your relatives take one. Uh, the more information that you have there, the more chances you have of narrowing down your DNA matches and learning more about your relatives. So we have that. Uh, we also have something new that we recently introduced, which is the My Heritage Gift Membership. So our gift membership is uh, brand new. We just introduced it this week. And it enables you to give a gift to a family member, to a friend, to somebody who's just starting off their family history journey, and to give them either a six month or one year complete plan on my heritage. So uh, we currently have an introductory price, 50% off. So really a fantastic gift for the holidays. Uh, if you have anyone in your family who might be interested in family history but hasn't really taken the plunge yet uh, now's the time so just a fantastic gift for the holiday season uh, we encourage you to take a look and uh, see if it fits the bill for for a present for somebody on your list so uh, we have those two things going on here at MyHeritage. Besides for that, during today's session, we'll, we'll have a giveaway and we'll be giving away a MyHeritage complete plan. So as I was talking about the complete plan before, the complete plan is the best plan we have on MyHeritage. Um, it includes access to 12.7 billion historical records, unlimited family tree size, uh, complete and free access to my heritage photo tools. So that's the My Heritage Photo Enhancer and My Heritage in Color. Um, in addition to so much more advanced DNA tools, just just a, a whole list of fantastic, fantastic features that you get with a My Heritage Complete Plan. So we'll be giving away one complete plan to one lucky winner today. And um, the first thing we'd like to hear from you is if anyone in the audience has ordered mixed tiles, we now offer photo tiles that you can print out and put up on your wall. So if you've offered, if you'd, if you have ordered mixed tiles on my heritage, uh, these photo tiles, we'd like to hear about it. Tell us about your experience. Tell us about what you ordered, if you ordered them as a gift or for yourself. Um, we'd love to hear about it. So please uh, leave us a comment about that and you'll be entered in the draw. If you haven't ordered mixed tiles yet, uh, no problem. Just leave us a comment about a family photo, something that you discovered in that photo, something interesting about it. Um, or if you've used the My Heritage Photo Tools, the My Heritage Photo Enhancer, or My Heritage in Color, let us know about that. And anyone who leaves one of these comments will be entered to win today. And we'll be giving that out at the end of today's show after the questions. So we hope to see your comments and to hear from you. Um, and now I would like to introduce our very special guest, a uh, great friend of my heritage that we have with us, uh, Maureen. Hello. Hi, Esther. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Sure. So Can't great wait. to see you. Yeah, we, we love having you. And, and I love learning more about photos. I know that, um, you know, I'm so interested in old family photos, but I feel like there's just so much to learn looking at them and, and from such an expert as yourself. Thank you very much. I love talking about pictures, as everyone knows. So for anyone who doesn't know Maureen, she is known as the photo detective, um, and she's an internationally renowned expert into historic photographs. So she has a lot of wisdom to impart on us. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you'll be speaking about today? 
I'm going to talk about uh, the ways in which you can overcome that overwhelming feeling when you look at your box of photographs and some things that you can do to have fun with them. We're going to cover a little bit about identification and organizing, preserving, but then also some cool things that you can do. Fantastic. I'm so excited. Uh, should I bring up your slides? Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's okay, jump great. right in, Esther. Okay, if you could just click presenter mode, then we're all set. Oops, and unfortunately it went to the, uh, hold on, <laughs> let's get out of this, Esther. It went to the end of the presentation instead of the beginning. So if we could stop sharing for just a minute. Sure, sure, no problem. There we go. Let me start sharing again and make sure no that this problem. is. It wouldn't be a Facebook Live if we didn't have uh, one little It's technical. always something, isn't it? <laughs> always. <laughs> Here we go. This should do it. Okay. Um, just in the meantime, I see lots and lots of comments already coming in. So great to hear from you all. Keep them coming. Um, and we hope to read out some of those comments as we keep going. Oh, there we go. I see it. I'm just going to put it into the stream. And you can there see just go. the title slide, correct, Esther? Yes. yes Great. Perfect. All right. So let's jump in and let's start talking about family photographs, which is something I am completely always willing to do. Uh, today is strategies to get past the overwhelm and uh, enjoy your pictures. Uh, I have some strategies for you. And one of the things I want to know is, is there something you want to do with your photos other than organize them? Or do you have a photo concern? Maybe you're way beyond organizing and you just want to identify them or preserve them or I don't know what your concern is. And I'm sure Esther will get some comments in the comment screen, the chat. But in the meantime, as you're thinking about that, because I have tips for all of this that I'm going to talk about today, what we're going to be covering is what photo tools you can use to have fun with your pictures and also help you organize and identify them. Uh, family history fun, of course. Family history is always fun, especially if we're on the My Heritage page. And what can you do with these images? There is lots you can do. And if you're like me, your image collection is not only uh, filled with images that you've inherited from individuals, but also images that you've collected. Maybe you found some online, maybe you've hooked up with instant discoveries on My Heritage, maybe you've uh, gotten contact with people through your DNA matches. But in any case, our family photo collections are a mix of modern photos, the photos we're taking today, the photos we took for our kids and our grandkids, the ones that were taken of us when we were small, and then everything that came before. So it can be overwhelming to think about your family photographs. I wanna thank you for attending and being here for this special My Heritage Lecture. I hope that you'll stay till the very end because I have a special offer for everyone who's in attendance. I am Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, as Esther said, and I am passionate about pictures, old photos, new photos, your photos, the photos we take today, the photos we took in the past. And I love sharing information about how to identify, preserve, and share those images because there is a story in each and every one of them. Your goal today is pretty simple, to see your photos as fun rather than troublesome, to learn how to use some of these tools that I'm going to talk about, and then I'm with your pictures and pass on the gift of family heritage. But it wouldn't be a lecture I'm giving if I didn't start out by talking about identification. Those images where you think you know everything, or maybe you know nothing about them, and how do you get to that point where you can tell the story? Well, Irving Penn, who is a famous fashion photographer, said this about a picture. He said, a good photograph is one that communicates a fact, which our family photos do, touches the heart, which I think they do as well, 
and it leaves the viewer a changed person for having seen it. And I think once we tease out all the facts, think about how that fits into our family history and look at that picture again, I think it does change us because we've seen what it can tell us. The way to identify a family photograph is by using this series of questions that I call my signature five, which is the who, what, where, when, and why of an image. And these are the basic building blocks of every good story, be it a fiction story, nonfiction, or your personal photo story. And the five are things like who's in the picture, who's not in the photograph, who took the picture, what are they wearing, what are they doing, where was it taken? That is often really key for a lot of people. When was it taken? Definitely everybody wants to know when their photograph was taken because then they can answer all the other questions. And then why? Why did your ancestors go to the photo studio or snap that snapshot camera and take that picture on that day at that moment? Sometimes it's clear and sometimes it's only when you answer all the questions that you come up with a big reveal. I call it the family history reveal. Suddenly you go, oh, I know why they took that picture. And it's amazing. It's not just a wedding photo. And I start the whole inquiry with just determining what type of photograph it is. You know, is it a snapshot? Like the one on the lower right of the screen where the mom's under the blanket and the baby's front and center. That's pretty much an amateur photography piece. Is it a tintype, like the man in the furry hat in the middle, which tells us it was taken sometime after 1856? Or maybe it's an amber type, like the hidden mother image at the top, which means it was taken sometime after 1854 and likely before 1870. And photo formats were popular around the world, not just in America where I'm sitting right now, but all over the world, there were tintypes and amber types and daguerreotypes even, snapshot photography, postcards, lots of different ways for our ancestors to capture the moments in their family history. Some of the other identification tips are things like adding up the clothing clues. Well, what are they wearing? What are these two men wearing? This is one of my family photographs and it's one I got from a cousin. So it's important to understand where the ownership of the image came from. Like what's the history of that? So I know for a fact that this is my mother's side of the family and it comes down in the family from that point. And I have other pictures of these two men. And because I know when they were born and I can estimate their ages, I know that this was taken in Canada, for instance, Quebec, and I can estimate when it was taken as well. I research the photographers, and you should too. Treat them as members of your family. So you use all your genealogical knowledge to find out more about the photographers that are mentioned on your family photos. And then fill in the blanks with your family information or local history or international history, because not all the clues are in the picture. Some of the clues are outside the frame. And when you do this and you start to tell your photo story, I want you to first start by focusing on the facts and use that as an outline. And then weave in the storytelling that you can accumulate from family history and local histories. And then by all means, please share what you've learned about your photographs. Share it with family because when you do that, it makes those images more important and less likely to be thrown out. Plus, it gives us a sense of our identity connection and sense of belonging in the family and even in the world. Family photographs and family history are, is very important. But perhaps you want to organize and preserve your photographs. What kinds of things do you need to know to do that? Well, I created a little workflow chart just to explain sort of how this works. I always start by scanning my images and I'm gonna talk a little bit mo more about that in just a second. And then I number all the images very lightly with a soft lead pencil, a very, very soft lead, like an ebony pencil. Then I used to chart everything, but there are other ways to keep track of that information now. And I'll explain that in just a minute as well. And then I file all the real stuff. If it's digital, then I organize it and I have a way to do that as well. But scanning is the very first step. 
And people always ask me, which scanner is best? I have an all-in-one machine, meaning it's a scanner and a printer and a fax, which I, I can't even remember the last time I used the fax part of it. And they're pretty good, but they can't scan slides and negatives and cased images. You could use a portable scanner, although they're much harder to find these days with some of the major players uh, no longer in production. You can use your phone or a tablet app like Google Scan, for instance, or some apps that have scanning features built in. But my preference is to use a standalone scanner, meaning a flatbed scanner that I actually keep on my desk. And I use it because I, it's multi-purpose. I can scan slides and photographs. I can uh, scan cased images, tin types. There's all kinds of things I can do with that standalone scanner. So it really varies. Like you want to ask me which scanner is best? It depends on the components in your family photograph collection. So if you just have snapshots, an all-in-one machine will work just fine. Let's talk about what scanning resolution and file type should be. So you should scan at a minimum of 600 DPI to 1200 DPI TIFF file, T-I-F-F, -F, in full color. Those are the basic preservation quality scans. You can always decrease the size of your scan, but you can't always increase it and get the, the same resolution. If you're wondering about filing your images, there's some basic things to keep in mind. And these materials are available around the world as well. You want to pick storage containers that are acid and lignin free, meaning they don't have anything that will damage. Uh, like you don't want to wrap them in newsprint, for instance, because that is both acid and heavily lignin. So you want acid and lignin free cardstock boxes. You can use non-PVC plastic or around the world, it's usually called polyester sleeves because when you sleeve your images, you're protecting them from rubbing up against other images in your boxes of images. Reinforced corner boxes are best because then you can stack them without worrying about crushing the images in the boxes. And then for special formats of photographs, you may need specific storage, for instance, Suppose you have some photo jewelry. Maybe you have a lot of slides, or maybe you have some of those cased images from the 1840s, 50s, and 60s. There, is special, uh, there are special storage boxes for slides um, for the daguerreotypes and amber types and tin types in cases, as well as the photo jewelry. You can actually use acid and lignin free microfilm boxes that are available from museum suppliers uh, everywhere. Let's talk about photo albums for just a minute. There seems to be this unbelievable urge by everyone to take those photo albums apart. But those albums actually tell you a story from the person on the first page to who's stuck in the back randomly. Mostly, there are no image, no, excuse me, there are no captions on the back of the photographs. So please don't take apart, especially your black paper albums, because then you're losing the context of the story. The only albums that you absolutely need to be concerned about are the magnetic ones, the ones with the glue on the pages that stick to your images. Those you need to replace. But then also recreate the order of the image is, uh, in your new album. Again, following the sort of preservation rules of acid and lignin free and non PVC plastic, all of that, and you can't go wrong, and your photographs will last for generations more. But as we're working with our family history, we are accumulating new images, we are capturing images online, and we are trying to share them usually because we're trying to put them in our family history. And maybe we're uploading them to our MyHeritage account as well. And I'll show you some tips for doing that in just a second. John Berger had an interesting perspective on images and the importance of them, which is that seeing comes before words that a child will look and recognize before it can speak. 
And that's part of what happens with our photographs. We look at them and we build up this verbal vocabulary in our heads of, I mean, a visual vocabulary in our heads of everybody in our family. And that's what kids do when they start looking at family photographs. They start identifying people in pictures. But I wanna ask you if you have tried the My Heritage New Photo Tools yet. And if you haven't, what are you waiting for? They're so good. I'm gonna show you some examples too. Um, I often play with them just to see what it will do to various images that I have in my collection. What new perspective will I gain when I use the enhancement and the colorizing tools? There's always something that pops out when you do that. Daniel Horowitz of My Heritage has been on my podcast, The Photo Detective, a few times talking about the ways in which you can use My Heritage for family history. This is episode 74 of The Photo Detective podcast, available on Amazon Music, Spotify, Stitcher, and uh, iTunes. And I'm now up at like episode 104. I interview industry leaders. I interview ph photographers who work in historical processes. I interview anyone who has a very interesting uh, story to tell about photographs in general. So if you know someone who might want to be on my podcast, send me an email through maureentaylor.com. One of the things that the My Heritage tools do for me is helping me see the details. So that man, the, the man and the boy that were standing next to the uh, sort of concrete pillar in that earlier tin type photograph. Well, there in this image, the man in the front is the older man, uh, the father, and the son is uh, One of the cool things is I told you to scan everything at 600 to 1200 DPI, but if your file size is too small or too big, it automatically tells you that when you try to upload it to MyHeritage. So you might have to decrease the file size for sharing purposes. And then you can, prepare, you can compare the before and after. So this is a little bit of a grainy uh, copy of what actually should look really sharp, but there's that family photograph and then colorized, automatically the people come to life. You start to see them as individuals rather than a, just a static black and white image. And the My Heritage tool actually colorizes some of the clothing as well so that you can see that maybe a rose on the right has a, a beautiful gray blouse, which would be in keeping with the time period. One of the cool photo tools on MyHeritage is just what happens when you upload it into your account uh, on MyHeritage because it tags or actually pulls out all the faces. It even will pull out faces of pictures that are on the wall, which is kind of cool because then you can compare those and see if those pictures are other family members or uh, images of them. And you can enhance, and here's just the enhancement, where it's sharper on the right and sharper on the left. But I will tell you that when you see one of these historical images in color for the first time, it does a little, it does make you a little startled. And as somebody said on Instagram, that seeing the old photos in color actually gives them the chills. And I know exactly what they're feeling because that's what happens the first, that's what exactly what happened the first time I saw one of my photos colorized. In the My Heritage, uh, I call it the photo dashboard, uh, you can share your images to Facebook and Twitter. You can copy the link and share it with uh, cousins. And you can see here the comparison between the black and white sort of sepia tone and the colored one. But here it is fully colored, which I think is just amazing. I mean, the green and the grass is a little too green, but it is an algorithm and it is learning the more 
photos that get uploaded, the smarter the software becomes. And there are image limitations when you upload uh, into these programs. And here they are for you just so you can uh, refresh your memory with them. It's 256 by 256 minimum and 3000 by 3000 max. And guess what? If you're not sure the size of your image, when you upload it to your MyHeritage account, before you upload it into the enhancement or the colorizing feature, there's a way for you to check the size of the image in the photo dashboard is what I call it. One of the cool things is the MyHeritage enhancement actually doesn't save two versions separately, they are linked. So if you only want an enhancement, make the enhancement and then download it. But if you want the enhancement and the colorized version combined, you can do that. So you can download the enhancement. However, bear in mind, if you delete the original image, everything is deleted. So everything is linked to the original image. And this is my favorite part because people ask me all the time, well, what do you think about the colorizing feature? What do you think about the enhancement feature? Well, I think they're great. They're tools in our toolbox for family history. And at the bottom of the images, you get two little icons, one for colorizing and one for enhancement so that no one ever has to guess whether or not those photographs have been not, I wouldn't say tampered with, but enhanced and colorized. On social media, people love the MyHeritage tools and they talk about how they truly come alive and how much they love it. So if you haven't tried it, guess what? And you're not a MyHeritage complete subscriber, you can try it. There are 10 free trials of the enhancement and several trials for the colorizations you won't be able to stop. Trust me, this is what you will do for the rest of the day. All trials will feature the MyHeritage logo. If you're a complete member, then you don't have a logo, just the icons designating enhancement and colorization. I've talked to you about identification. I've talked to you about organizing and preserving. And now I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what all this means when you put it all together. And here's a thought for you to think about. Every photo tells a story, but remember this, there was a storyteller behind the lens. We often forget about the person who actually took the picture. And I love this little girl in her Easter finery out in front of her house. Uh, but obviously somebody took the picture. So when we're identifying images, we need to think about who might have taken that picture, especially if it's a snapshot who's not in the photo, as well as who is in the image. So because I like to share my family photographs with family, I have played around with a lot of different tools to help me do that. And nothing beats the expression on my mom's face from a couple of years ago when I took all of her wedding photographs, which had been stained because the photographer hadn't rinsed the pictures long enough, and I took them and I enhanced them and I used uh, Vivipix Restore for that. And I used snapfish.com, which is a, a website where you can create a photo book. And I put them all together, all beautifully done in a book that she can have and look at. And it makes her very happy. And then what I did was I had her professional wedding album. But I also, in the snapshot collection, had a lot of random snapshots of their wedding taken by other people in the family. And no one can remember who took those images. But I added them all in the back, sort of a snapshot section, and I put them all together. So she really does have all of her wedding photos together in one book at her disposal to look at. But if you're trying to collect the stories of the images, there's a new thing that I want to tell you about, and that is storyglory.me. And these two guys came up with this idea because Brad was home looking at family photographs with his mom, and he was rapidly either trying to write down what she was saying or use the record feature on his phone. And he said, gee, wouldn't it be great if, I, if there was an app where you could upload an image and then just tell the story into your phone connecting it to that picture. And thus, we have storyglory.me, absolutely free. Anyone can use it. These guys are great. I love uh, innovators. But suppose you just wanna do something simple. 
well, why not start a family Facebook page? And Facebook is a, you know, getting some bad publicity these days, but the groups and the pages that you can form are definitely the best way to make the most use of Facebook. So suppose you started a family Facebook page uh, and you just shared your favorite family photo and asked other people in the family to share that. Wouldn't share their family, uh, family favorite. Now, would that be a great interactive thing for your family to do together? You can even, by the way, collaborate in the My Heritage. But when you do this, when you share your pictures and you share your stories, you simply do not know what you might uncover. It could be something completely unexpected. But until you open that door to looking at those photos and sharing them with everyone, you don't actually know what will happen. I want to tell you that photographs, I've become completely fascinated with other ways that people use photographs other than for family history. So believe it or not, you can recreate your Victorian decor using photographs. And I had a guest on the podcast who, who did that. She's a curator of a, of a historic house and they needed to recreate the drapery in this photograph. And they were able to do that based on uh, the visuals that were in this picture. So that's just a sort of fun, cool way that people are using photographs for something else. So this is what we used to do, right? You could buy frames, you could print your photographs, you could align them on the wall and have a good time with them. But now it's even easier. So here's the thing. I know Esther mentioned in the beginning mixed tiles and mixed tiles is a nice uh, feature now within the My Heritage photo dashboard. You see that little pink icon over here. I don't know if you can see my pointer or not, but over here we have this little thing in the middle. This is your sharing button, your download button, your trash button. Uh, but if you go to this button and you click it, there is a way to connect your family photographs that you've uploaded to mix tiles to make it easy for you to order them. And there's a before and after right here. So let me show you what I've done. So I started thinking about, or mostly overthinking, what were my favorite images in the family and which ones would I want to share and why would I want to share them? So I uploaded um, five of them to mix tiles and uh, had a good time with it. I have some Christmas presents in here for people actually. Uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're doing this mix file, and there's so many ways you can do a classic, which I did, the bold, the, the ever, the clean, the edge. Um, I think I did the edge on these, but one of the things you want to keep in mind is that it is a square format so that many of our heritage photos are not square format. I mean, Instagram is a square format, but that's just about it. You will have to crop your images and be careful when you're cropping them. Don't crop your original scan, make a copy first and do that. And then enhance and colorize. And then you can upload directly to Mixed Tile uh, from my heritage. Now, Esther, can you see me on the screen? Because I want to show my enhanced uh, image. Probably can't. Can you see me uh, in the let corner? Me just, let me just put you in one moment. And then I'm going to hold this up. Are we good? So this is one of my mixed tiles. And shh, it's a secret. <laughs> So hopefully somebody in my family that's getting this for a present isn't on this in this presentation today. But I, I chose the edge so there's no border. Um, the beauty of the mixed tiles is it has this strip on the back. It does not ruin paint or your walls at, at all. And you can remove them, shift them around. You can store them. You can have uh, different displays at different times of the year but I colorized and enhanced this wedding photograph and it's gonna make a very special gift for someone. And they're very light. They weigh uh, virtually nothing. And so it's very uh, fun. It's very fun to work on them. It's fun to work on photo projects. It takes you away from everything else that's happening in the world. Thank you, Esther.
then how are you gonna manage all of these photographs? So you've scanned them. Hopefully you have filed the original and you have uploaded them to your MyHeritage account. That's great. One of the things you have to keep in mind is metadata. So metadata is used by family historians, date, source, you know, where you got that photograph, the caption on the image, either what's on it already or what you supply, the location where it was taken, and the people that are in the image. So let's go to my next picture. So this is the photo dashboard in my heritage. And there's a group portrait of this family. And this is showing the comparison of the um, enhancement. And all of the faces are at the bottom of the screen and I can tag all of those people and my heritage actually puts a little box around the face. And so that, you know, that's the person you're tagging. And then it pulls some of the names from my family tree, which is great. So I don't have to fill that in. I'm going to do a close up of this to show you some of the details in here. So I've tagged just two of the, all of the group in there. I can add keywords. In this case, I added a keyword of 1934 and Pawtucket, Rhode Island, meaning where the picture was taken. I can add notes and I can edit all of these things at any time. So these are part, this image is part of a series of images taken on the same day. And then if I uh, had thought about it a little bit more, I could put it in an album and I could also link it. So I could link to this photo as well. And all of that is possible in your photo dashboard on my heritage i love the photo tools on my heritage it's like perfect it's just the kind of thing i've been hoping for for a very long time to help us all understand organize and connect with our family photographs but i will say that there is one more thing you need to do for me and that is you need to get yourself some photo organizing software so that when you are taking digital images or you have digital images you have everything in your my heritage account but you still need a photo organizing software. So I advise you to use it. What you're looking for is to make sure that that photo organizing software actually embeds your, the metadata in the digital file so that it's not lost, um, that it goes with the digital file. And that using photo organizing software and the metadata will allow you to find your photographs really fast. So I use one that I use on a desktop and, and it's an app and there's a whole lot of them out there. And basically once you use this photo organizing software, you can add the metadata, which is all the stuff that you are trying to find out about the photo anyway. You can edit it so you can add or subtract metadata at any time and you wanna harness the, the album feature that's offered in these uh, photo organizing packages so that you can create an album for each and every person and then know what you're looking at. So you can find, I can find all the pictures of my mom, for instance, if I metadata, uh, put all the metadata in all the images. And then by all means, knowing all where all of these pictures are digitally, whether they're in your MyHeritage account and in your photo organizer, it means that you will be able to collaborate and share those images easily because you'll be able to see them all and make your selections. Uh, there are some new things happening in the family history world. There's a group called the Family History Metadata Working Group that is coming up with a set of standards uh, for companies, photo companies and genealogy companies about metadata and your family photos. We'll have to see what's coming up uh, with them. I know I worked on uh, one piece of this, and I'm looking forward to learning more about where it stands right now. But I will say thank you so much for joining me. If you need help to identify or organize or preserve your family photographs, I do work with pictures from all over the world. Um, photographs have a tendency to bring the world together, and I have you covered. If you need help, feel free to reach out to me on MaureenTaylor.com. I have a little help feature that pops right up, and that email comes directly to me. But I also have a special offer as a thank you for all of you for joining me today on this My Heritage special presentation. Um, it is my Tackle Your Photos bundle. It is a three lesson course on digital photo organizing, including best practices, it, a nine lesson course on identifying family photographs, 
and then a six lesson course called Essential Photo Organ Organizing. They all come with handouts and workbooks. And uh, my clients tell me that these this series of classes not only helps them identify their family photographs, but teaches them how to file them, but also how to organize all their digital stuff. These three courses usually sell for a combined price of $229. But because you're watching the My Heritage presentation today, I'm offering it at $99, which is a 57% discount off the regular price. And this offer will be good for the next 24 hours. So I want to thank you all for joining me for this My Heritage uh, presentation on strategies to overcome overwhelm and start to enjoy your family photographs. And I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. Esther, do we have some questions? Yes, we do. We have a whole bunch. So first all of right, all, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm going to sit up in my seat a little, a little straighter. <laughs> Thank you for that presentation. And I love that mixed tile. So, so gorgeous, that photo. Um, I see some people asking, how do you order them? So we put a link to the blog post with a, a whole explanation of just the whole process, how you go through uploading photos onto MyHeritage, how you can colorize and enhance them, and then go through the process to um, order mixed tiles. Um, another great holiday gift, uh, you said you're getting them for your sister. So uh, it really is a great present for the holidays. Just so nice. Um, you know, and if anyone wants to take advantage of the Tackle Your Photos bundle, they can give that as a gift as well. And I will send a personalized message. Oh, fantastic. We put a link to that, that in the comments section. So for anyone who's looking, it's over there as well. All right, um, I'm ready. Shoot okay. with the questions. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so first we received some really nice uh, comments. I'll just read out a couple of the comments before we get to the questions. Um, just some really nice. Uh, Kimberly says, the colorizing is amazing. Seeing my Polish great grandmother brought her stories to life. So lovely. Uh, Lou Ann wrote, I love colorizing old pictures. It brings them to life. Some even made me cry to see them in color. Uh, it really does. It brings out so much emotion when you see it in color. It's just a, a different experience. Um, just some really, really nice uh, fo uh, comments here uh, from from everyone. Uh, Victoria says, what a great session. I love Maureen's tips. So uh, I think everyone really, really enjoyed it. Um, and now a few questions. Uh, let's see. Um, Karen asks, I would love to learn how to organize my photos. Do you have any tips? Well, if you're going to organize the real stuff, you have to start with the scanning. Oops, Esther went away. <laughs> Hope she comes back. We have to, uh, you have to think about where you're going to store them and you want to find a place where there's not temperature and humidity changes and car. You want to sort of think about how many you have so you can buy the right materials. Um, and I, Hope we are still live. We are still live. And then I just like to give you the full screen. When oh, you're, when you're okay. <laughs> I thought you disappeared. I was like, uh oh, I'm on my own. <laughs> no, no, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Uh, and then you just make sure you have a space for them, the right materials, and a plan for how you want to find them later. Okay, um, I saw another question. I can't find it right now, but um, it was just in a little more detail. It said, are there uh, standards for organizing your photos specifically on MyHeritage? Once you have them on MyHeritage in your photo section, do you have any tips uh, for how to organize them there? I think I need to do a whole thing just on organizing your photographs on MyHeritage, Esther. <laughs> it's a date, it's a date. It's a date. So we'll get back to you on that, but I think it, I think it's long overdue long overdue because okay. i love the photo dashboard it's my favorite and of all the genealogy mega sites what my heritage does with photos is really incredible in the way you can keep track of lots of information and then of course that whole instant discovery thing so yes let's make it a date okay fantastic and and um we also just love that photo dashboard and uh we're not done there's uh, i know <laughs> <laughs> There's lots, lots coming in that department. So, so definitely stay tuned. It just gets better and better. We're just always thinking of ways to innovate, um, new tools, new features. Um, so yeah, so, so lots of exciting things to come. Um, let's see, we have a question here 
from Shauna and she asks, uh, what is the best way to store and preserve old negatives? So it's the same rules for old negatives as for pictures. You wanna buy some polyester sleeves for them and then they sell special ones, right? The right size for negatives. But then you also want to make sure, well, you can actually scan them. So you have um, a scan of them and you can reverse it to make it a positive. But then you want to put them in acid and lignin free envelopes, for instance, or folders, something like that. It's pretty easy. Can I just jump in and say, I know some people are saying over in the chat, the uh, PDF uh, link is actually uh, not a handout so much as it is a sort of Thank you for all of you for attending and uh, signing up for my newsletter in case you want to know what other talks I'm giving in various places, including my heritage. I think we have some stuff coming up. Yeah, fantastic. I see Tina wrote, I have a big job ahead of me to scan and organize my family photos. Retirement can't come soon <laughs> enough. <laughs> I think that's how we all feel, just uh, just so much work um, to scan and everything. But I think just to do it slowly and, and one thing at a time, I think that's kind of the message here. Uh, we have a question here um, from Laura. She says, I have glass plate photos. How do I care for them? Oh, well, first off, make sure you're wearing gloves when you handle them because some of the early glass plate negatives are quite sharp and you, you can cut yourself. Um, you must store them upright rather than laying down flat because they uh, create too much weight on the box. So you wanna make sure you have a really strong box and you store them upright with pieces of acid and lignin cardstock between each one so they don't rub and bang. Um, but those are definitely worth scanning and then um, turning from negative into a positive because they're just the stuff on those things is priceless. What a treasure to still have. It amazing. is a treasure. Yeah, they are a treasure. Amazing. Uh, Victoria asks, my parents have lots of slides which used to be shown on a big screen. What's the best way to save and digitize them? So you can digitize your slides. There are little devices you can buy. There's even a new app that just sort of floated across my Facebook page at me and I didn't click it, so I haven't seen it since. Uh, but it's a, a smartphone app to help you scan through your phone those slides. Um, what else you can do for slides? Well, you can send them out to be scanned. There are scanning services that'll do that for you if you don't wanna spend all that time because it will take a long time to scan your slides. So there's three options. Okay. App, scanner, send them out. Sending them out, obviously, being the, being the easiest. <laughs> it's way easy. <laughs> so many options nowadays. So, so at least we have that. That is one of them. Fantastic. Uh, Mary asks, overwhelmed by the photos I've acquired over the years and have taken myself, how do I tackle organizing and making them available to other family members? I think that's what we talked about today. This presentation will be on the My Heritage Facebook page. So you can watch it again if you like, but I do advise you to share it um, however you decide to through Facebook or email or even some of the photo organizers, you can share that way. And My Heritage has a collaboration tool built in to the photo dashboard so that you can uh, share that link with people and have them add their story to what you know about the photo. Exactly. And you can also um, just invite different uh, family members to be members on your family site and then they can upload their own photos as well. And you can all be collaborating uh, with the photos in your photo section. So that's a great, um, a great option if, if a bunch of you want to work together and collaborate. Um, and as Maureen said, this Facebook Live, as well as all of our other Facebook Lives, are available on our Facebook page. So if you go to facebook.com slash myheritage, under the video section, you'll see you'll see this Facebook Live afterwards, and you can rewatch it if you missed anything, uh, any points you'd like to see again, um, as well as all of our other Facebook Lives. So they will be available. Um, Let's and I'm going to go through all these comments when we're done, Esther, and try to answer the questions that I haven't answered yet because um, there's so many. Fantastic! <laughs> oh, uh, we'll just we'll just take one or two more uh, in the time that we have. Um, I see this nice one from Kimberly. She asks, "Any ideas on identifying 
photos with little information on them? I'm sure you get this question quite a lot. And that is actually what I specialize in. Uh, I have techniques like that Signature 5 to work on people's photographs. And I uh, have clients from all over the world who come to me with one photo or three photos or many. And it, it is about studying uh, the photographer and the clothing and the format and your family history and putting it all together. And I'm certainly here if anyone needs help. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Uh, Catherine says, I have three photos supposedly of my great great grandfather, one of my grandfather and two from other cousins. My grandfather's mother had labeled ours on the back. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it is really of her father and the other two look nothing like ours to me. Do you have any suggestions on how to tell whether the photos are of the same person? I see this a lot actually in photo groups online, uh, two yeah. photos and how you can tell if, if they're really the same person from different years. Uh, yeah. Any about that? Yeah, there, I mean, there's so many points in the face that you match up or don't match. But the thing to keep in mind is our photo collections are a collection of not just family members, but sometimes friends of the family because we've exchanged photos. I mean, we exchange photos with our friends or, you know what I mean? So uh, not everyone in your collection is going to be a family member. So it may be just a myth that someone has passed down. Okay. Um, we'll just take one last question. Um, this one from Sherry and she says, speaking of unusual uh, photo formats. I have a large cardboard backed photo of my husband's grandfather in a large banquet setting. It is deterior deteriorated and broken into three pieces. Is it worth having it reassembled or is there a software that will match the pieces and scan it? Yes, yeah, some scanners have stitching software. So it'll digitally stitch the image back together and then you can make a new print. I think what she's talking about are the yard long images they're long, oversized images. There were special cameras actually to take those. The circuit camera, it would sort of like what we do with our cell phones now on the panoramic setting. Uh, uh -huh. Whether or not it's worth having it professionally conserved depends on how important that image is to your family. Sounds like an important image. So, so maybe, yeah. maybe worth it in this case. Um, okay, thank you so much. I think we're going to choose one winner now for the My Heritage Complete Plan. Yeah, very exciting. As we said, the Complete Plan is the best plan we have to offer on My Heritage, uh, with access to 12.7 billion historical records, unlimited family tree size, um, and of course, access to all the photo tools, um, unlimited use. Uh, the photo tools that Maureen spoke about today, My Heritage in Color, My Heritage Photo Enhancer, uh, whereas if you are a basic user, you'll get up to 10 tries with each. With the My Heritage Complete Plan, uh, you could really be, be using it all day long. As Maureen said, you probably will be. <laughs> <laughs> they they really are addictive. Once you once you start, you just can't stop. It's just it's so nice to see the photos in color and to enhance the photos. Uh, it just makes them so so real and come to life. Um, so we're going to choose a winner for today's complete plan, and that goes to. Beverly Leeming and Beverly wrote, I enhanced and colorized my great aunt's wedding photo from 1924. My mother at age three was the flower girl and her parents were in it. What impressed me was her mother's dress which she knew was gray and it was colorized as gray. The colorization in general was good and the details in corsages and hat decorations were enhanced. Very nice to have. So congratulations, Beverly, and we'll be in touch with you through private message to win your prize, to claim your prize. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. So, so great to see you all with us. And Maureen, we really, really appreciate you joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And it's always fun, Esther. And we'll thank have you to, so much. We'll have to plan something about organizing your photos. It seems like uh, the people want it. <laughs> I think so. Organizing with my heritage. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So thank you all. And uh, we hope to see you again next time. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.